So I was the first speaker for the wellness panel. He's going to be speaking on practical activities. stress in their lives. 
is a friend of mine who was an accountant. So there's the end of the tax year, he's working long, long hours, lots of pressure, got to get lots of things done by midnight on a certain date. His blood pressure goes up. So he takes medication, gets the blood pressure down. Once the tax season is over, he takes a holiday, he's off the medication until next year. And other people never need medication. They lose some weight, they cut back the salt in their diet, they reduce their stress, they never need medication. I think this is a much better model for the depression because I think you find those three groups of people. Some, yeah, they do need medication all the time. Some need it from time to time, some never need it. You give them some strategies on how to live life and, uh, and they get better. Now we're doing five minutes, good. So I think that uh, depression is curable. It's certainly treatable because some people will have symptoms of depression and never have them again if they take the strategies. Um, what they need, though, is an antidepressant program. They need to realize that they are in charge of their own lives and they're in charge of their own happiness. Uh, and so it's about empowering them. It's about giving them a sense of realism. So it's about offering optimism, and being optimistic as a therapist that there is good out there, that life can be good. But also it's practical. If, if it's only optimism, then you're standing in the dark tunnel and you're really optimistic that it's the, it's the light at the end of the tunnel. And as the train hits you, you're still optimistic. As you <laughs> so you need your optimism to have a sense of practicality and realism to it. A little pessimism, perhaps, you know? There's nothing wrong with a bit of pessimism as long as that goes. It's all about the balance. So, how do we go? So, there we go. Let's have happy faces when we're treating depression working with depressed patients. And I think it's important for the therapist, too, to say, hi, how are you? And, and to talk about some, some positive things. So how do we go about this? Now, apologies to anybody who's not in the, in the uh, NLP community, but I, I use NLP as my model. I'm trained as a martyr practitioner. So a lot of this is sort of met, uh, NLP jargon, I'm afraid. So the first thing, of course, is to challenge the truth. Now, the trouble with that is, not everyone wants to stop feeling depressed because they can't. And it's a little bit like someone sitting down in a deep, dark well and they're sitting there in the water and it's cold and it's dark and it's dank and the light's way up there. And you throw them a rope. You say, well, how do you like to pull yourself up? No, 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 no. And then you throw them, give them a ladder. They go, oh, I can't do that. I can't climb a ladder. And sometimes, unfortunately, the light outside the well is even more frightening than the well, the well itself. It's more frightening than the familiar. So the unfamiliar is more frightening than the familiar, and people don't want to get out. So it's a little bit like uh, how many therapists does it take to change a light bulb? Well, only one, but the light bulb has to want to change. <laughs> and so some people either can't or they won't, and it's a struggle. It's a struggle. So, but it is about that. It's about challenging the meta programs that lead to these filters of seeing this horrible dark world and this gloomy outlook. Uh, and I can do this. I'm going to just in the limited time, there's going to be a few ideas here. Um, we've had a bit more time, we do some lovely experiential exercise, we experience all these. I use some hypnotherapy, that's a great one for going back in time and retrieving happy memories. I have some people say, I didn't have anything happy in my life at all. And if you use hypnotherapy techniques to regress, you can take them back to a happy time and it reframes everything about how life is not as deep and dark as it, as it, as they, as it appeared to be. Um, setting up success, outcomes, absolutely setting up outcomes. Uh, positive, specific outcomes uh, for what they're going to do and how they're going to do it and, and how they're going to get there. And of course, initially, that is all about hope. I talk about having hope. You have to dream. You have to dream a little. A lot of people have not had success in life, so they need to start dreaming. To go back to that childhood years when they dreamed of being an astronaut or dreamed of being a nurse or dreamed of being a multi-millionaire. They have to start dreaming, and then they have to develop a vision, and then they start to develop goals, and then they have outcomes, and then they have plans, and then they have action. So they have to start sometimes way at the top of the logical levels before they can get down to actually making a difference in their lives. Grateful Journal is the greatest antidepressant you can have with no side effects, no nausea, uh, <laughs> no bowel problems, and oh, 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 you still want sex, which is pretty good. <laughs> Sometimes that's the last thing they want, and I think, you know, it's, it's the trouble is that it creates often sometimes symptoms of depression, which doesn't make sense at all. So, anyway, Grateful Journal is great. Write down, write it down, don't think about it. Write down every day five things you're grateful for, and start to really notice that. And if some people you know, think of two, that's okay, write down two. Start there, start anywhere, and write that down. 
So those are some of the ideas. Obviously, a lot of Ericksonian metaphors. I, I tell lots of stories. Uh, I like to tell you one now of a patient of mine who was depressed. He was about 30. He was depressed all his life. And he was very much like that head of the movie source clinic who came in every day. And, and, and again, it was a struggle. We did timeline one day. We did a timeline with him. And that was a revelation because uh, all of his future was in front of him. This was good. All of his past was behind him. But there was a period in his middle teens, around 15, 16. He was involved in gangs. He was involved in drugs. And he moved on from that. He was very ashamed of those times. And where were those memories? Right smack in front of his eyes. So he was seeing the whole world every day through this unconscious image of these shameful times. And he was very quickly able to put those memories back in order, back in the past, and put them in their chronological order. And as he did that, he started to smile. And he carried on smiling, and that was his therapy. He moved on. That's it. Thank you very much.